Thank you, Mr. Hitchcock. Our uh, last but certainly not least uh, speaker this morning is David Katz. Mr. Katz is a partner at Wachtell Lipton, Rosen and Katz. He specializes in mergers and acquisitions and complex securities transactions. A graduate of uh, Brandeis University in my hometown, shameless plug for Waltham, <laughs> uh, and NYU Law School, Mr. Katz has taught mergers and acquisitions at NYU for over 15 years, and he co-teaches as a joint law and business short course on mergers and acquisitions at Vanderbilt University School of Law. Uh, Mr. Katz also uh, writes a bi-monthly column for the New York Law Journal on corporate governance. Mr. Katz. Thank you very much. Um, my role this morning and my remarks are really going to cover this from a more practical perspective of what the corporate dynamic is and what some of the impacts can be if we try to engineer that dynamic in a way that I think is, is problematic. Um, you've already heard about the way the system has worked. Um, you've heard some of the history here. Um, I don't disagree that there's always going to be a, a struggle between the federal government on the one side of, of trying to see what the limits of the corporate statute should be and the states on their own enabling uh, companies to, choo to pick and choose. Um, the system does work. Companies do change states of incorporation. Uh, they do pick uh, the state that they want to be incorporated when they come into existence. And that decision is made hundreds of times a year uh, as new public companies come into being and as people compete for capital. My difficulty with the current federal uh, legislation that's out there, and we're going to talk more about it uh, in a few minutes, is that it really takes a step in the wrong direction. It's a reaction to the financial crisis, but in fact, the proposals that exist today, I think, will further uh, cause problems to the corporate structure in a way that will hurt the ability of companies to continue to compete uh, as they have in the United States. And it's possible that you know, we'll see other models or other systems that have better access to capital as a result of that. What, what am I talking about? A decision was made a long time ago that the board of directors is responsible for the oversight function of a corporation and that shareholders, by putting capital in, are entrusting managers to take that capital and use it in a way that will ultimately benefit the shareholders, but is also meant under the corporate statutes and under federal law to, to, to benefit the society as well. What we're moving towards is a more shareholder-centric approach as opposed to a director-centric approach. The way the system has historically worked is that if shareholders were unhappy with actions that a corporation was taking, it always had, they always had the ability to replace that board of directors. But they didn't have the ability to meddle in the day-to-day -day decisions that a board would make um, on issues like executive compensation on issues like what the structure, you know, what, what investments should be made. And that was left to the, to the management of the company and ultimately under the supervision of the board of directors. What the new legislation will do in many circumstances is really further promote the interest of shareholders and take away the power of the directors. The du shareholders have always had the ability to police directors by replacing them. And for example, one of the big issues is the SEC's proposal on shareholder access. Um, it's a misnomer to some extent because shareholders have always had the ability to replace directors. What the SEC's proposal does is it allows shareholders of a certain size to use the corporate, corporation's own proxy statement to nominate directors for election. Um, anybody would have the ability, any shareholder, regardless of size, has the ability, frankly, to nominate directors. But the issue today is that there's a cost to that. 
And the, what the SEC is doing and what the sh corporate governance, shareholder activist slash corporate governance movement is pushing more is, well, shareholders should have the corporate proxy statement, which the corporation is going to be mailing to all its shareholders, act as the vehicle to present these nominations as opposed to simply presenting the management slate. That has the impact of taking away the power of, um, you know, the directors to, you know, over the longer term to really make the decisions that I think they need to, to have the ability to make. And if you try to micromanage some of those decisions, you're going to end up with a short-term focus as opposed to a long-term focus. And that really is what I see as the problem with the federal legislation. One of the problems with the financial crisis has been consistently argued that it was caused in large part by this short-term focus. The push for people to have quarterly profits, to disclose earnings in excess of whatever the analyst consensus numbers were, and to continually beat, beat, beat the street on a quarter-by-quarter -quarter basis. If you focus on it that way, um, you'll manage the company in, in, in one respect. And if shareholders, and especially large institutional shareholders who frankly control about 70% of the equity of public companies in the United States, if they are also measured on a quarter-by-quarter -quarter basis and they push companies to act that way, the companies are not going to make the longer-term investments that they need to really grow and prosper and, in my mind, for society in the United States to prosper, and it's when one of the, the fundamentals of, of the U.S. system. The corporate system that the states have put in place allows states to choose a particular state. They choose what the, what the specific rules that they face are, but they are always subject in every single system, state system, to their boards of directors being replaced by the shareholders. If the shareholders are unhappy about something, they get the chance to replace the board. When you move to a system where the shareholders have a, a view on executive comp, nothing stops shareholders today from expressing their views. But to actually mandate a say on pay advisory vote, uh, because that will somehow fix the system, I think is, is, is very short-sighted. But my big issue is this short-term focus versus the long-term focus. And what I think you need to really think about is what, what's going to be the long-term impact of of, of these types of statutes. Um, my view is the intrusion of federal legislation into this area of corporate governance um, is really unwarranted and frankly is somewhat dangerous. Um, while some of the provisions of, of the most recent legislation have softened uh, some of the original uh, proposals from Senator Schumer and from others, um, they still interfere much too much in my mind in the corporate governance dynamic. Um, things like whether you should have a separate CEO and chairman, um, whether you need to have a mandated proxy access, whether you need to have specific rules on executive compensation. That's those types of, of proposals are going to further empower the shareholder activists, the institutions, and remove the power uh, from, from the, the retail shareholder base who, for, who under a number of, of uh, changes both under New York Stock Exchange rules and other systematic problems really have been losing, losing voice. And my view is that the short-term pressures that this creates will force companies to continue to make the bad decisions that led to the current economic crisis as opposed to making some of the longer-term decisions that can be more beneficial. The other big issue I have is that every corporation is different. And a one-size-fits-all federal statute that focuses on each corporation and assumes that it's pretty much the same creature, uh, in my mind, is a mistake. It's the differences that corporations have. Investors can always choose to invest in the stock of a company. They can choose to have a voice by putting forward directors or by opposing uh, actions that are taken by the company. That voice is not being taken away. But to say that you need federal legislation to require some of these actions or to have specific votes on some of these matters is, in my mind, quite problematic and it's something that we'll develop during our panel discussion today.